Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you 10 skincare products I don't buy. Stuff that I don't buy, I don't use, I have no interest in using. Some of these products I may have purchased and used in the past, but I'm not really interested in using them moving forward. Um, so yeah, and if you are new here, the first product should come as no surprise to you. I do not use eye creams. Why? Eye creams are unnecessary. Whatever moisturizer you are using on your face should be just fine to use around your eyes. The skin around your eyelids is more likely to develop irritation from ingredients. So a lot of eye creams are formulated to have fewer ingredients, but honestly, if you take a step back and really look at the big picture, your moisturizer should kind of speak to a minimal ingredient list and be just fine to use around your eyes. Moisturizers that I use on my face are gonna be more than fine to use around my eyes. The moisturizer that you use on your face, newsflash, it doesn't stay put perfectly. It's not like it's glued down to the skin where you put it. It moves around and transfers to the skin around your eyelids. And so to say that like you're using a separate moisturizer, like, like there's this defined anatomic boundary between the skin on your cheek and your your eyes and product cannot cross that boundary is ridiculous yeah most moisturizers are more than fine to use around the skin of the eyelids that being said things you don't want to put there are going to be uh, ingredients that are intended to exfoliate Vitamin C serum shouldn't go there because it's very acidic. The skin around your eyelids cannot handle it, but I mean, that's not a moisturizer. Um, exfoliating acids, you don't wanna put around your eyelids. And so it's always prudent to take a step back and not put stuff there, but it doesn't mean that, that you need a separate moisturizer for your eyelids. That's just, that's just a gimmick. So yeah, don't waste my time on eye creams. Second product you will not see me buying using at all is a rose water spray. My gosh, I cannot walk into a store looking at the skincare products and not see some kind of rose water mist, spray, what have you. Why don't I use these? Well, in general, facial sprays are a little gimmicky. You spray water on your face and then that water evaporates. And as it evaporates, it can draw more water out of your skin, making it more dry and irritating. In the case of rose water, there's nothing in rose water that is evidence-based for providing any skin benefit. So you spray your face with what is essentially a perfume and then the water in the rose water evaporates out and makes your skin more dry, more irritated, and it leaves behind the kind of uh, rose ingredients that people believe are helpful, but we really don't have any evidence for that and more often than not can cause irritation. That's not to say though that I'm opposed to all facial sprays. Some facial sprays have active ingredients in them that are moisturizing and you know can benefit the skin. With the caveat that if you use a facial spray, apply it, mist it onto your face and then put a moisturizer on over it to lock in that active ingredient within the spray. The next product I don't buy, toners. Toners is something you will not see me buying. And when I say toner, you know, the definition of toner has morphed a lot over the past few years, especially with the interest in K-beauty and Japanese skincare. They define toner as something very different. I'm specifically talking about Western toners. Western toners are alcohol-based products that originally were intended to balance out the pH of the skin and help remove residue from cleansing. And this used to be important because soaps and cleansers were really of a very harsh pH. They were lye-based soaps. And these old school soaps that had a really harsh alkaline, a really harsh alkaline pH, they would leave behind soap scum on a soap scum film on your skin. So toners were necessary to balance that out and remove that. But the manufacturing of soap and cleansers has come a long, long way. And soaps and cleansers are pH balanced for the skin. So this is not an issue. And therefore, these toners are not necessary. These toners often have alcohols in them, which you know are not the devil, but they definitely can dry out your skin and irritate your skin. These to yeah, toners are pretty much obsolete, with the exception of uh, a lot of products on the in the skincare market claim to be toners, and these are actually 
liquids that have active ingredients in them, usually for acne, like salicylic acid toners. I'm not opposed to those for people with, with acne, but you know, if you don't have acne, there's, there's really no need to use a toner and it can definitely dry out and irritate your skin. So I don't recommend them or use them. Fourth thing I do not waste my time, money, or efforts on are fad ingredients. Ingredients that are trending and that people get excited about and that you see, like when you walk in the store, you see multiple brands with new lines being launched that feature said ingredient. Things like charcoal, turmeric, rose water, CBD, uh, you name it. All of these ingredients, you know, Manufacturers, they have a way of taking maybe one or two little tiny studies that we have in the literature and going wild with them. Like in the case of probiotics and skincare, I mean, we have a few studies in conditions like acne, eczema, seborrheic dermatitis that suggest that pro topical probiotics might be helpful for those skin conditions. But all the studies in those different skin conditions with probiotics, they use different strains, they look at different endpoints. There are so much, there's so much variability that we really don't have the kind of studies that we need to really say if these are beneficial. Furthermore, we don't have any studies to suggest that if you don't have these inflammatory skin conditions like acne, eczema, seborrheic dermatitis, that you really need to be using these things or what the right strain is, etc. So that's an example. Same thing with turmeric. I see that all the time in skincare products. It's really hard to formulate it, but that's not gonna stop manufacturers from pumping it into a lot of products. And these ingredients, they get marketed so heavily that it you know, it becomes a narrative of a must-have ingredient. And my comment sections and my videos, my Instagram comments get flooded with, please comment, please discuss like good products with this ingredient. It's like, take a step back. We don't really have any data to show that you need that or it's important or that your skin even gives two wits about it. So I don't get excited about trending ingredients. That's not to say that I don't try these ingredients out. A lot of times products are sent to me because of my presence on YouTube and you guys might want me to talk about them, so I do, but yeah, so I don't get excited about trending ingredients whatsoever and nor should you. I mean, don't drop everything, buy a new like skincare product or skincare line because it's got some new jazzy trending ingredient. It's largely being marketed to you as something that you need when in reality there's zero data to suggest that you actually do need it. Product number five you will not see me buying is water wipes. Water wipes like makeup wipes, cleansing wipes, baby wipes. I don't buy wipes. As a matter of fact, the only time I think I can recall engaging in wipe usage is when dining in a restaurant where the entree was intended to be eaten with one's hands and afterwards the waiter or waitress would bring you a water wipe to wipe your hands. When it comes to cleansing, wipes do not clean your skin. They don't remove makeup, they don't remove dirt, they don't remove sebum or oil. They just kind of move it around. They don't even help break it up. And another issue with these products is that they have ingredients in them that leave behind a film on the skin that can cause irritation. And a lot of these water wipes have preservatives in them like methyl isothiazolinone, and people do become allergic to that. And water wipes are a major, major cause of that type of skin allergy, a major reason for that. It's not just the makeup wipes and the you know face washing wipes or whatever you want to call them. Baby wipes are another culprit. I don't have babies, so I have no need to buy baby wipes. But if you have a young child, be aware of the fact that water wipes can cause a lot of irritation in the diaper area and be a cause of diaper dermatitis because they leave that residue behind that can be irritating to the baby's skin. Other reason I don't buy water wipes is they are not the best thing for the environment. Product number six that I do not buy are going to be scrubs. Uh, scrub masks, body scrubs, exfoliating scrubs, anything that has like sand, kukui seed nut shells, I don't buy those things. Why? Because simply bathing on a daily basis, washing your face on a daily basis, is going to help with the exfoliation of those dead, crusty skin cells on the top layer of the skin. 
the rough mechanical exfoliants in scrubs just cause a lot of issues. They can cause irritation and, and whatnot. So I don't use those. I don't even have particularly sensitive skin. I just find those things a complete waste of time. Plus, they make a mess. They make a mess. I mean, I've, I've been sent these products before and I end up using them on my feet and they are messy. They get all over the shower and I, I just can't stand those, those scrubs. Yeah, I don't, uh, pumice scrubs, no. I mean, yeah, I don't use those. Product number seven you will not see me waste a dime on is going to be a lash serum. Now, I don't have any issues with my lashes. I, I happen to be happy with them, but if I had thin, sparse eyelashes, I still would not buy lash serums because they are a gimmick and they can cause problems. They can cause eyelid irritation, uh, rashes, etc. There, as a matter of fact, there was a lawsuit against one of these lash serum companies. I won't name any names, but um, for not properly, I think it was a lawsuit or the, the FTC came down on one of these lash serum groups for not properly disclosing the risks of these lash serums of irritation and whatnot and people developing really bad problems. And if you're trying to improve the health of your eyelashes, you don't want to put things on the lashes that can irritate the skin around your eyelids because that irritation can lead to loss of eyelashes and eyelash breakage. So I don't recommend those. You know, prescription bimatoprost, AKA Latisse, can and, and, and does help in lash growth, but it too comes with these risks of irritation. Your eye, eyes can change color. I mean, there are several problems that can arise just with the prescription stuff that we actually know works. But on the cosmetic market, you know, the regulation is a lot more loosey-goosey in terms of side effects. And to me, it's just more trouble than it's worth for people, more risks of irritation and problems, no evidence to support that these, you know, cosmetic lash serums actually regrow lashes. So I don't buy them, I don't use them, I would never use them if I had lash problems, and I don't recommend that you guys use them. Yeah, I'm not into the lash serums, but I'm always getting questions. What's a good lash serum? What's a good lash serum? No lash serum. Next thing you will not see me buy, and is a trending, trendy ingredient or thing to buy is facial oils. Squalane oil, rosehip oil, hemp seed oil, CBD oil, 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 oil. I don't buy oils for my face because I use a moisturizer and moisturizers have emollients in them which do the same thing as oils. Smooth down the surface of the skin cells and create a smooth, smooth feeling and can lock in a little bit of hydration. I don't get caught up in different types of oils or anything like that. You know, skincare marketing will start telling you that certain oils are good for certain skin types and that they have these antioxidant compounds that are going to address pore size and smooth. All of this stuff is just bogus nonsense when it comes to putting oils on the skin. Uh, you know, to say that, to say that, any one type of oil, whether it be hemp seed oil or any of these other exotic oils, has benefit to the skin over mineral oil. I mean, prove it. <laughs> prove it. I, I have not seen, I'm not seeing any studies on this, but that doesn't keep skincare marketing from selling a boatload of overpriced oil to people. So I don't buy oil, facial oils. Now I do buy cleansing oils. Uh, cleansing oils are an oil with emulsifier in it uh, to help uh, break up things like water resistant sunscreen. Using a cleansing oil is a more efficient way to remove things like cosmetics, sebum, and water resistant sunscreen. In the case of water resistant sunscreen especially, that's actually been shown. So I do use cleansing oils, but I do not buy facial oils to leave on the skin. The other reason why I'm not into facial oils, like a, especially a lot of plant oils, is that um, they're not pure substances, so they have different compounds in them that can oxidize when exposed to light and air and whatnot and degrade and become very irritating. A lot of people's acne will be aggravated by some of these oils. It's hard to predict who that is, but the skincare market tries to, tries to trick you and tell you that certain oils are acne safe and others are not. And that's, that's like complete, that's like a complete made up story that they're telling you. I mean, 
people with acne, their acne can be sensitive to these oils and it's not like a specific oil over another. So I don't waste time with them and I'm not like a fan of them. Now, if you use a facial oil and you enjoy it, that's great. If it doesn't cause any problems for you, you like the way it looks, you know, I can see why a lot of people, especially people who wear makeup, like that emollient effect before they put on their makeup, fine. Like I don't necessarily have problem with them they can cause issues for people but it's just a thing for me like why would i buy that i use a moisturizer it already does that for me product number nine i do not buy anymore i used to i used to buy a lot and review on this channel is sheet masks nothing against sheet masks i just reached a point where i found myself buying them and not using them I am somebody who doesn't have the attention span to, I don't know what it is, a sheet mask, I just, they sit in a box and I don't use them. So I stopped buying them. And there's, I don't have any problem with sheet masks, namely those that are free of fragrance. They can help with skin hydration. If you have particularly dry skin, they, they can help, but they're, they're not like ever a permanent solution. Plus I was getting sent a lot of sheet masks and it just became, my apartment became a house full of sheet masks. Uh, yeah, I, I got tired of them. I didn't, I, I wasn't using them, so I stopped buying them. And coming back to kind of why I don't buy wipes, not the best thing for the environment, these single use sheet masks. A lot of sheet masks are laden with nothing but irritating ingredients and fragrance. And then other sheet masks, they might have ingredients that are actually good, but it's like, all right, do you really want to use this ingredient? If so, you need to be using it on some consistent basis, not in a one-time sheet mask kind of, kind of a deal. So I don't know, I stopped using them. Again, I don't have a problem with them. I, I do use those under eye hydrogel eye masks. I like doing those. But, and you, you know, you can make the argument like, well, those are just as wasteful and like, what's the point of those? For some reason, I enjoy doing those. They're relaxing for me um, and I prefer those. But the sheet masks, I just got to a point where I was like, I don't enjoy doing these. And I guess because a hydrogel eye mask, I can multitask more easily with as opposed to the sheet mask. I mean, maybe it's something as goofy as that, but yeah. Gave up on the sheet mask and no longer buy them. Product number 10 is something <clears throat> I would never in my entire life buy, never have bought, never will buy, and strongly encourage you ladies out there not to buy, and that is feminine washes. Uh, these are horrible. They alter the pH downstairs, make you predisposed to things like yeast infections, bacterial infections, and they can cause a lot of irritation. <clears throat> Here's the thing, the female genital tract is a self-cleaning device. You don't need to deodorize it, perfume it, or anything like that. And it can lead to a lot of problems using products like this. Uh, not only, as I said, alters the pH, makes you more predisposed to yeast infections, bacterial infections, but these things can cause a lot of chronic irritation. And I, I think, where people run into problems with these is uh, when you first use something like this, at least I'm guessing, because I've never used anything like this. I think when you first use something like this, it's heavily fragranced, so you think that like you have, you're somehow cleaner. And then what ends up happening is that after a few days or whatever, then the issues start arising with the product. The fragrance, the, the natural bacteria start kind of breaking up that fragrance and whatnot, and, and it smells foul. It alters your pH, it causes irritation. That irritation and whatnot can lead to foul smelling discharge. And I think people then believe, oh, it's time to use the, the feminine wash or the feminine deodorant. Oh, they're so bad, you guys. They are so bad for, for that area. You, do not use, you don't need to use any type of cleansing product just water. I mean, you really don't, you really, I mean, it cleans itself. Like, and along the lines of the feminine washes, looping back to the wipes that I don't use, a lot of these brands have gotten on the wipe train and they have scented wipes. And so you're running into the same issue that I mentioned with the facial wipes, that you're leaving behind a residue of pre preservative plus fragrance now. It can really cause a lot of problems. So I don't recommend them and uh, stay away from them. They're no, they're no, they're no good. 
yeah, they've even gotten on the wipe train. I mean, what is it with, I've noticed this as a side note, like it's something, it's something about the drugstore uh, market where wipes are, are where it's at. A lot of the more like trendy uh, indie brands or the stuff in Sephora, less on the wipe train, but it's like if you are a drugstore uh, skincare brand, you have to have a wipe. It's like a requirement. Have you guys noticed that? Cetaphil has wipes, Neutrogena has wipes, CeraVe has wipes, uh, Simple has wipes. Yeah, everybody's got wipes. I mean, <laughs> it's like, what are we wiping? Wash your face, stop wiping it. Yeah, don't, I can't, I can't with the wipes. So those are 10 products I do not buy or use. Um, and if you guys are new here, I have another video from a long time ago talking about why I don't buy or use vitamin C serums. And that is still another product I don't buy, so that's an 11th one. But uh, yeah, if you're wondering like why I didn't mention that, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't buy that either. But you can watch that video if you want an explanation as to why. But share in the comments below stuff you guys are not buying. You know, in the current climate, unfortunately, uh, people are struggling financially. So share what we do not need to buy down below. Hopefully these 10 things you can cross off your list and not buy them either and save yourself some money. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.